Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning about Viola sororia wild, otherwise known as the hooded blue violet, the confederate violet, and the common violet. The common violet is a herbaceous perennial plant that grows to be about 7 to 15 centimeters tall. This species is commonly used as a ground cover and it makes a great one at that because it can form dense mats of itself. Additionally, this species can be consumed by both humans and wildlife alike. Some mammals and caterpillars will consume the foliage, whereas we can consume the flowers by turning it into jelly, we can candy them, or we can add them into salads along with the leaves. Lastly, this species is highly variable and it likes to hybridize with close relatives, so it can make it kind of difficult to identify. Now, if we turn our attention to a distribution map of the common violet in North America, we'll see that it's native to Eastern North America and aggressive in a few Western states. For the most part, people enjoy having violets around because they stay pretty low to the ground, aren't terribly aggressive, and bloom frequently. If you'd like to add common violets to your landscape, know that they grow in hardiness zones three through nine. When it comes to the common violet's natural environment, it prefers moist, shady areas. It can be found in areas like forests, along streams, or in disturbed areas like along roadsides or in someone's lawn. This species can do pretty well in clay soils where a lot of other species might find it difficult to grow. Now, if we turn our attention to the leaves of a common violet, we'll see that they're dark green, shiny, simple, heart-shaped, and toothed. Occasionally, the leaves can be pubescent, but this is one of the highly variable traits of this species, along with leaf shape. Now, if we take a look at a whole plant, we can see that all of the leaves and flowers of this species arise from a rhizome on their own individual stems. So the leaf arrangement for a common violet wouldn't be opposite or alternate, but it would just be a basal rosette. Now, this thick underground rhizome allows the violets to reproduce asexually, hence why they're able to form dense mats of themselves. Now the flowers of the common violet bloom in the springtime from March to June, but they sometimes bloom a second time in the fall around October to December. When this species does bloom, it produces a single drooping flower that can vary in color, but they're generally violet, hence the name. Each flower has five rounded petals, which consists of two lateral petals, which have tufts of hair known as beards inside of the white throat of the flower. Also, there are two upper petals and a lower petal that acts as a landing pad for insects. Also, this lower petal forms the nectar spur of the flower. Behind the flower, it has five green lance-shaped sepals. We also have a peduncle which supports our flower. And yes, it's a peduncle, not a pedicel, because a violet is technically an inflorescence. Now, if we cut open one of the flowers, we can get a closer look at the reproductive organs of the common violet. Inside of our violet, we have five stamen, which are typically fused, and we have a single pistil. Here is the nectar gland that produces nectar inside of the nectar spur. So this flower I've been showing you is one of two types of flowers that occurs on a common violet plant. This flower is a chasmogamous flower, which means that it's open and can be cross-pollinated. However, this species also produces cleistogamous flowers, which are small, green, and low to the ground. These flowers never open and they pollinate themselves. The purpose of these flowers are so that the common violet can always produce seeds, even when there aren't pollinators around. However, as far as our chasmogamous flowers are concerned, bees and butterflies like to visit them. After pollination takes place, capsules will form that are dark green and are spotted with purple. The capsules will dry out and split open three ways, revealing small brown seeds. The seeds I'm showing you here are a bit premature, so they look like corn. Oddly enough, ants are attracted to violet seeds due to a fleshy covering on the seeds. So the seeds are dispersed by ants. Alrighty, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about the common violet, otherwise known as Viola sororia with me. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.